Well, tonight we've learned former Tennessee State Senator Katrina Robinson's sentence for wire fraud means she gets to go home tonight due to time served. She also gets one year of supervised release for four convictions. Federal prosecutors say she used the federal grant money for her nursing school on personal expenses. Another day, another sister politician doing what they do. And I've often said, man, sisters wield an incredible amount of political power in this country. Um, if you just look at the mayors of all the major cities, the police chiefs also, the city councils. Um, now he's Supreme Court, vice president. So um, anyone that wants to argue that, even look, the one of the most powerful sisters is a chick who lost her election, Stacey Abrams. She lost. And she's like one of the top five most powerful politicians in the Democratic Party. Period. And she's not even in the squad. She don't even have to be in the squad. She just, uh, she just a, um, a lone wolf. <laughs> she lost her election. So, um, yeah, man. Sisters will the credible amount and Unfortunately, like all politicians, they're susceptible to the same thing that all politicians are. Just at a higher rate. <laughs> it's just at a higher rate with them. Um, gosh, I mean, I've been, I haven't even been covering this like as a theme. I just catch this every once in a while, man. It's always something. Federal prosecutors say she used the federal grant money for her nursing school on personal expenses. During sentencing, the judge scolded Robinson for using hot-button issues like race to excuse her sloppy record-keeping, adding she failed to respect the grant money that taxpayers paid for. The judge scolded her for using hot-button issues like race to excuse her sloppy record-keeping. They always do that. It's like a reflex. Literally, it is literally like a reflex. You catch them doing something, just like with the Supreme Court. They're asking, I mean, super legitimate questions about her. Yo, like, <laughs> about kids. <laughs> Yo. Well, what's up with this ruling about these kids? <laughs> you racist. <laughs> it's, it's a reflex, man, at this point. During sentencing, the judge scolded Robinson for using hot-button issues like race to excuse her sloppy record-keeping, adding she failed to respect the grant money that taxpayers paid for. After the hearing, Robinson told reporters she felt probation was a fair sentence and she plans to keep working in the community. Of course, last month, she was expelled from the state Senate for those federal convictions. Well, today, a well-known Memphis rapper got the key to the county. Kia Shine launched his career in the early 2000s with a hit song called Crispy. We <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just got kept a straight face, man. Salute to this anchor, man, for keeping a straight face, man. Like, he's the real MVP, man. I thought I had it together, man. I'm sorry, y'all. I thought I, I really thought I had it together. All right, I'm good now. Today, a well-known Memphis rapper got the key to the county. Kia Shine launched his career in the early 2000s with a hit song called Crispy. We caught up with Shine to get a deeper look at his music. Memphis has, has inspired me. You know what I mean? It, it made me. It raised me. Memphis, Memphis prepared me. 
Memphis is like training ground. I always feel like if you can make it out of Memphis, then you can probably make it anywhere. Now, the first national hit that everyone else will say, okay, it's so crispy. It's so crispy. It changed my life in a way that people recognize the music, recognize the vibe. I'm so crispy. I always tell young artists and people that anybody is right now a two minutes and 30 seconds song away from, from, from a hit record. You know, one song truly can't change your life. Days we gonna do it for Memphis, though. The sound of Memphis hasn't really changed much. It's just what has happened is now more people are on our sound. We've always stayed true to what we've done here. It's just more people and more ears and more eyes on our sound now. But it's Memphis versus everybody. You know, keeping in Memphis is a, is a slang. It's the way you talk. It's the way you walk. It's your, it's your, it's kind of your savoir faire. It's your demeanor. It's that moxie. You know what I mean? That kind of makes you Memphis. But also keeping in Memphis, it's a certain way you carry yourself. A certain way. You, it's a certain prideful way of being. And we want to recognize you today with the key to the county for your work in the community and your artistic. I do think as artists we got to be a little more responsible for what we're saying because impressionable minds are listening to the music you know what i mean so i i have a responsibility of, of making sure he said a little bit more responsible <laughs> a little bit more responsible i'm not even gonna pull up no memphis rapper lyrics but listen this is how bad it is. If I were to say the lyrics, for instance, to say I was to go to a video, of course the videos will have commercials and be monetized. <laughs> and the guy will be saying the lyrics on the video. If I were to repeat those lyrics on this channel, they would demonetize the video. <laughs> so I think you got to be um, more than just a little bit, bro. <laughs> Think about what y'all saying, man. Just a little bit more. More than a little bit. How about that? Let's start there. I do think as artists, we got to be a little more responsible for what we're saying because impressionable minds are listening to the music. You know what I mean? So I, I have a responsibility of, of making sure that I use my talent and my, and my voice to speak life. I just really appreciate, I really appreciate the uh, the opportunity and I really appreciate being honored and I really, I feel like it's a, it's a blessing. I'm humble and I'm thankful that I'm not where I was, but I still feel like I'm not yet where I want to be. I got more work to do, but I, but I am humble. As we celebrate Memphis and Women's History Month, we highlight women who've been leading the way in our community. Lakita Johnson spoke with a former Memphis City Councilwoman about the women who inspired her to pursue a career in politics. When I started on this journey, there were so few women. There were so few women. My sheroes were real, like Maxine Smith. Also known as the mother of the civil rights movement in Memphis, joining the list of other political giants. Tawan Stout Mitchell, who served in politics in Shelby County, says those who've come before her paved the way and inspired her to carry the torch. I had models of women, Barbara Jordan, um, uh, Shirley Chisholm, that I could see doing those things. And I felt, yeah. That's something I can do. Mitchell has had multiple leadership roles in her career. She served on both the school board and Memphis City Council for two terms. She was also part of the four administrations of mayors. Mitchell, who is a mother of four, says when her children came up in the public school system, she felt compelled to get involved and address certain issues. I felt compelled to say something when I saw classrooms growing at the rate of 25 or 30 children in a classroom. So let me get this straight. <laughs> as a politician and as a person that wanted to be a politician all their life, what was going on in the Memphis schools, and we covered that here, you guys know what's going on here, didn't really bother you until your kids went. <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, I could understand that. You know, you're more involved in, in it as, as a parent. You see, it, it, it hits home more. But, you know, as a politician, you just would have hoped that, you know, she wouldn't have had to see her kids go through that before she wanted to do something about it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there, man. Look, she, she, whatever. She, she, whatever she's done hasn't worked. 
And no one has any answers for that. And there's no solution to that problem. So I can't really like knock her. There's, no one's been able to figure out the conundrum of predominantly sun school districts. <laughs> no one. I felt compelled to say something when I saw classrooms growing at the rate of 25 or 30 children in a classroom. How can you give attention to children who may need special attention. Mitchell says after having a hand in the school system, she knew she had a purpose to fulfill. Schools that needed remodeling and didn't have air conditioners. Uh, and Memphis is a hot, hot city <laughs> in more ways than one. Uh, and so I wanted to use my voice for those things. Mitchell, You notice? <laughs> you notice she focused on things that, that were fixable remodeling the classrooms and putting air conditioners, better air conditioners in the classroom. <laughs> she didn't touch behavior or grace because <laughs> she knows <laughs> there's no solution. So she's a very smart politician. She fixed, she went in there and said, all right, what, what can we change, man? Um, okay. <laughs> Um, let's remodel the classrooms. <laughs> there are no solutions. Mitchell is now a political consultant and helps other women who aspire to be in the field. She says along with her faith and family support, she surrounded herself with other leaders who push for diversity, which has also contributed to her success. I tried to surround myself with men who understood that women had a place at the table, too. In Memphis, I'm Lakita Johnson. Well, we've asked viewers to tell us about the women who've inspired them, and one viewer named Kathy told us it was her daughter, Natalie. In 2017, Natalie was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer, undergoing eight rounds of chemo, surgery, and 30 rounds of radiation, and Natalie never missed a day of work. Kathy told us she saw just how strong her daughter was and looked up to her in a much different light. Natalie is now cancer-free and owner of Place to Be Event Center, and Kathy says her daughter has become an inspiration to many others. We love sharing these kinds of stories, so keep them coming during the remaining week of Women's History Month. Who's a woman who's inspired you? Just text us her name and why she is so special to 901-321-7520.